You've exhausted my patience. We saw this in the first episode of Naruto when he was trying to channel his chakra for the Shadow Clone Jutsu. How come he doesn't power up like this more often? How exactly does this work? Before, Haku had to jump from mirror to mirror and now he's just TPing through the gaps. Naruto, behind you! Haku most definitely wasn't in that mirror and he didn't run into it. He literally disappeared behind Naruto. A cool little detail here is that Naruto turns to land on his left shoulder so he doesn't land on the spikes in his right shoulder. Your chance of escaping my house of mirrors is zero. That is absolute. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. I will do what I must. Naruto, are you able to get up? <sighs> Try not to use any more chakra. That's only going to help him now. <sighs> I know, Sasuke, I know. <sighs> This is a completely different side of Sasuke. You can hear in his voice that he's genuinely concerned for Naruto. And despite Naruto being tapped out, he still remains stubborn because he doesn't want to seem inferior to Sasuke. My eyes have adjusted to his movements. Looking for a counterattack? I'll save you the trouble. What? Cool scene and all, but I can't help but notice the awfully convenient timing of Senban appearing on the ground. They were literally not in frame until Sasuke knelt down to pick one up. The amount on the ground also doesn't come close to how many Senban were thrown into the Shadow Clones and at Naruto and Sasuke. Look here, Haku only threw three needles, but then Sasuke reflects more than three. Sure, he could have thrown more needles off screen, but he's never thrown them like that before. At least the amount of needles here make more sense if you consider how many Sasuke deflected versus how many Haku threw, but still, it doesn't add up. Naruto, you'd better not pass out again. Come on, let's go. I can't keep protecting you like this. Well then, don't. I never asked for your help. You can't revive him. He's reached his limits. Even while Naruto is passing out, he's still putting on the tough guy act. Man's definitely got heart. The look of disbelief on Sasuke's face says it all too. He expected Naruto of all people to keep pushing on, but twice he's tried to get back up only to fall right back down. Oh yeah, and this is just a few scenes away by the way, and all the needles vanished. Concentrate. See everything. Obviously, Sasuke is shouting out his inactivated yet, but I just love how they slowly but surely allow Sasuke's perception to get better and better to leave the viewer wondering if the red eyes are necessary to benefit from the shouting out. Impossible. And there they are, baby. Sasuke finally has his shouting out. If you look closely, his right eye has two Tomo and his left eye only has one. This pose has always looked extremely awkward to me. I believe in their abilities. I have faith in them. Naruto, the number one hyperactive knucklehead ninja. And Sasuke, heir to the most powerful clan in the Hidden Leaf Village. <sighs> That's a complete 180th earlier when Kakashi said they have no chance. It's also cool to see that even though the Uchiha are practically extinct, Zabuza still knows of them and fears them greatly. Sakura, stay with Tazuna! Okay, uh, got it. I don't know, Kakashi. That's a really complex order you just gave to Sakura, and quite frankly, I don't think she's capable of completing it. She's never done anything like that before. You should see the look on your face. You... You look like a total loser! <gasps> Sasuke just couldn't let Naruto win. Even on his way out, he had to make sure he got the last burn. Why... why did you... <sighs> save me? Why did you do it? I don't know why... <sighs> I just did! Not gonna lie, this made me sad my first time watching it. I know Sasuke isn't the main character, so I figured he actually just died. Naruto is so sad and confused because of all the people who have possibly sacrificed their life for his, Sasuke was never on that list. 
I didn't ask for this! I didn't ask for you to save me! I don't know. My body just moved. There was no time to think. This just goes to show that Sasuke isn't an asteroid. He could have easily just let Naruto die there to save his own life. Or he could have traded Naruto's life for Haku's. Instead, his body instinctively moved to protect Naruto. He's still out there. My brother. I promised myself. I'd stay alive until I killed him. Naruto, don't let your dream die. Pain. You finally get to see Itachi's whole face along with his three Tomo Sharigan, and all it brings us is pain. I... I hated you too, Sasuke. And yet... I get the mask of being a child soldier and having to go through stuff like this. And this is supposed to be a kid's show. No, that's not edited. Someone legit forgot to continue the animation for the smoke. The sound animation is playing and nothing is happening visually. There it goes. Definitely wasn't supposed to TP up so far off screen though. I'm gonna kill you! Yikes. I don't know about y'all, but I got chills my first time seeing this. His voice changed so much as well. I legit thought he was about to become the fox like everyone thought would happen. Kakashi suspected Naruto's ceiling factor was coming from the Nine Tails, and this confirms it. Uh. Is Sabuza creating this? He's not. I know this chakra. There's no way. What is this energy? Something foul. They've never mentioned it so far up to this point. But it would appear at the very least, droning level ninja can sense chakra. It's similar to how in Dragon Ball Z they can sense and identify key signatures, which I think is pretty neat. Overall, quite a packed episode. We got to see Sasuke fight his hardest in order to protect Naruto and awaken a Sharkon in the process. When I originally watched this episode and I saw the title, The Broken Seal, I wasn't even thinking about Naruto. I was considering him down for the fight. I thought I was referring to Sasuke awakening his Sharingan. I figured Sasuke was going to clutch this fight and that was going to be a Dragon Ball division for Naruto. Turns out, Sasuke proved he is nothing like his brother and used that power to sacrifice himself for Naruto. While Sasuke is dying, his mind is flooded with memories of he and Naruto and surprisingly enough, they causes him to smile. He puts on the show about hating Naruto, but perhaps that's just because of his brother. We get to see that deep down he doesn't hate Naruto. At least not anymore.